Hey everybody, hope you all are doing well and welcome back. And recently the wife and I, we took a trip out to Las Vegas as we were bound to do sometimes. And we stopped by one of the Las Vegas Total Wines and we got super lucky to find some pretty amazing bottles and a great candidate for our next Is It Better Than Blanton's video. So today we are doing our Whiskey Wanders at the Total Wine Las Vegas. We're looking at the three bottles that we thought were interesting and some that we bought, the Hancock Reserve, the Garrison Brothers Single Barrel, Barrel Select, as well as the always delicious Yamazaki 12. Now, if you like these videos of the Wanders, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps out our channel to grow and you also get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. All right now, let's get down to the video. Okay, first things first, let's do a real quick whiskey check. And today I'm going to be savoring, you know what? Let's do something a little nice today. Uh, so I think I'm gonna be drinking a bottle of this Lagavulin, a bottle, a glass of this Lagavulin 16, which is an amazing everyday sipper that I really enjoy, especially if you're feeling kind of peaty. So let's uh, get a glass here and get a pop. Let's see if we can get a pop. Not too bad. Pour a little bit for myself. And uh, to whiskey. Because let's face it, really, you can never drink too much of it. You can only just drink it too fast. Cheers. All right, so for the first bottle up for this wander that we found at the Total Wine in Las Vegas is one Hancock Reserve. That looks like a pretty fancy bottle. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you. Something you find on a rich guy's, inside the globe, inside of a rich guy's office or something like that. <laughs> now, we've got this one specifically because as soon as we walked into the Total Wine, almost in unison and almost in chorus, all the folks who work there mentioned that this one is basically, it's basically, it's almost exactly the same. It's basically Blanton's. It's also from Blanton's and it's a great alternative to Blanton's. <laughs> so needless to say, my tater tendency started to come out <laughs> in force. And even though I had not really heard much about uh, this Hancock Reserve, uh, we decided to pick one up anyways to see if the hype is true. Now, after doing a little bit of research, uh, you can find out that there are a lot of similarities uh, to Blanton's this Hancock Reserve has. Uh, first is that it is from the Sazerac family and ultimately <laughs> it is distilled by Buffalo Trace. And reportedly it has Buffalo Trace's high rye mash bill number Two, Utah, make it two. <laughs> Which puts it actually in the same branch of the family tree from Buffalo Trace as Blanton Single Barrel, as Elmer T. Lee, as Rock Hill Farms, as well as Ancient Age. So there's definitely a rationale behind it being an alternative to Blanton's. That is, despite not being able to find any mention of the Hancock Reserve anywhere, nor hide nor hair, uh, on the Buffalo Trace website. But, you know, I get it. We all got those family members. I got a cousin like that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we got this one from Total Wine in Las Vegas for $69.99, uh, which is above the MSRP, which is around 50 ish dollars. And although I have never seen it at Costco, I have seen it uh, once at BevMo as well when I was looking through uh, the interweb. And uh, right now they have it on sale for $61.99, which means that uh, by picking it up at Total Wine, I did end up overpaying, I uh, overpaid by about $8 or 11%. Now the ABV on the Hancock Reserve um, is at 44.45%. You can see that here on the neck tag, which is kind of an odd um, an odd percentage, right? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little bit lower than the normal Blanton's, uh, which has it at 46, and I think that can vary, but this one, for example, has it at 46 and a half. So it's a little bit lower than that, um, which, again, I don't know, maybe that's why it doesn't get as much press. Tasting notes on the Hancock Reserve mention a variety of flavors, but ultimately that it is relatively thin-bodied. And furthermore, they mention that there is things like cinnamon, sweetness, vanilla, um, but there is a noticeably overpowering of oak flavor with pepper spice. Presumably that's the high rye. Overall, the reviews for the Hancock Reserve, <laughs> well... Uh, they're not exactly very kind. On average, you got 78.67 points out of 100, which I say is probably below average. I would count that as below average. Sure, it's a C, but yeah. Now, this could be for a couple of reasons that are not really the fault of the bourbon. Uh, one is that whatever that Buffalo Trace magic is that they sprinkle on there, 
doesn't seem to rub off on this one. Um, you know, it just doesn't seem to be there. Also, uh, it's sort of unknown. It's sort of underpowered. And it's definitely kind of sort of unassuming. It's, you know, very forgettable if you saw it on the shelf. So it's got all those things working against it. And also, it's not in the family tree on Buffalo Trace. So if you did go to look it up, it wouldn't be there. Also, it does kind of make me wonder, is this what some of those most sought after Buffalo Trace bourbons like the Blantons or the Elmer Chili, is this what they would taste like if they didn't have that added additional flavor of hype? So for me, this one was a buy. Uh, I was willing to put a couple bucks down and I'm still willing to put a couple bucks down on the barrel head to see how the redheaded stepchild of the Buffalo Trace Distillery, how it tastes and how it pans out and also to see how it compares with its compadres. So. For me, uh, this one was a buy, um, but you know, if it was not a Buffalo Trace, and if there was not a singing chorus of Total Wine reps saying that it is a Blanton's alternative, honestly, I don't think I would have probably bought it uh, on its own merits. All right, next up is a whiskey that I, I guess I had the pleasure of uh, smelling at a Total Wine grand opening that we put up recently. I'll put a link up here. Um, and I don't know, it's some sort of silly California law where they can't let us take any shots of it or samples of it, but they like spritz it in a cup and you can smell it. It's very strange. Anyways, uh, this is the Garrison Brothers single barrel, uh, and this one specifically is a total wine barrel select. Now, Garrison Brothers is a whiskey that I have begun to see kind of all over the place, and I really want to try it. I have not yet done so. I guess I did smell it, but I don't know if that counts, but I'm super interested. So let's get that out of the way. Now, one other thing, and just as a side note, this is not a, this is not a critique or anything, but uh, about Garrison Brothers is, I get it. You are from Texas. Texas is a great state. There are many, 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 many great things about Texas, but it doesn't mean you have to beat everybody in the face with it. Now, that aside, Garrison Brothers is yet another kind of whiskey startup that recently has done really well for itself. And to me, it seems like it's trying to push for a Texan perspective on whiskey rather than what we've been seeing from the classic whiskey makers out of Kentucky or some of the new age whiskey makers off the West Coast. So it is cool that there's new ones and I totally dig that there's a Texas perspective on how whiskey could be. It's also cool that they do as much as they can by hand and keep most of the production local and use small barrels, <laughs> which gives the whiskey purportedly uh, more barrel flavor. So I think that is all great and all very cool. But for me, you just need to dial the marketing down a little bit uh, and, you know, let the whiskey stand for itself. Now, this one here specifically uh, at Total Wine is a Total Wine barrel pick of the single barrel. Uh, there is no age statement on it, but uh, the website does indicate that there is an aged whiskey in it, a minimum of three years in the Texas heat uh, in white oak barrels, which is pretty much a standard affair. Also, it claims that the unique environment, uh, that it's hot in Texas, makes it not necessary to age as long as standard whiskey. And in fact, you get the same effect as if you had aged it longer. Now here at Total Wine, we can see that the price on the Garrison single barrel is at $114.99, which is a bit astonishing considering what the whiskey is. I mean, sure, they got startup costs, and <laughs> I guess someone's gotta pay for all that marketing and cowboy hats, but I also did find it on sale at BevMo for $113.99, even as a non-barrel select, so just the normal single barrel. And I've also seen it posted on Costco for $89.99, which seems kind of even a lot at that amount for what it is. But, you know, that's about as cheap as you're going to get it if you can find it at the Costco. So if I had bought it at the Total Wine this time, which I did not, I would have definitely been at the top of the market uh, for the cost on it. I would have paid $24 over the Costco price or 26.67%. Now the ABV on it is at 47%, so it's not exactly a heavy hitter, especially at that price. Uh, but the tasting notes mention flavors like caramel, leather, fall fruit, uh, toughness, which I, I like that, but I don't know what toughness tastes like, um, and a body that is thin to the medium size. Now, the reviews that I could find on it, though, uh, were sort of all over the place. I mean, some of them are in the mid-70s, some are in the 90s, which means to me, at least, that either it is a love or hate type whiskey, or there's some payola going on there, uh, which, again, wouldn't be out of the ordinary for a company who is doing a full media blitz to get their product out there and to get it recognized. But the average score I got, I found, was uh, 74 out of 100 points. So in the end, though, um, this one was not a buy for me, at least not at that price. I mean, at $114, a new whiskey like this that is kind of not proven, 
it's a tough weight class for it to be in. There's a lot of competition at that price point. Sure, it's got a unique Texas perspective on whiskey, and I think that is worth paying a little bit extra for. And it's boutique, and it's handcrafted by artisanal whiskey makers who are wearing cowboy boots. I get that again, and I'm willing to pay all extra for that. But at $114, that one's going to be a pass. I'm just going to wait till it gets marked down or shows up at Costco and at least get it for 89 or something like that. All right. Now, last but not least is a favorite of mine uh, and many of you, really, who watch this channel, which is this Yamazaki 12. Obviously, I did not buy this one uh, at on this trip, but uh, I did have one previously. Let's take a look at that. Uh, and of course, as you can see here at Total Wine, they put it up next against their fraternal twin, the consummate bunkmate of Yamazaki 12, the Hakushu 12, which is also pretty good. And <laughs> to keep in line with that, I also put them next to each other. Now, Yamazaki really is the flagship distillery under Suntory. And as of late, it started to show up more and more. Luckily, after Japan has opened up its doors and all those ships start landing in the ports and actually getting unloaded. Uh, but the price for it can really be outrageous depending where you get it at. I mean, one of the biggest benefits to it is that it is a true Japanese whiskey. By that I mean that it is distilled and it is bottled and it is aged all in Japan. And it comes from one of the oldest distilleries in Japan. Uh, at Total Wine, we can see here that the cost on it and the price on it is at $159.99, which honestly is going to be at the top of the market. Um, usually it is priced similar to uh, the Hukushu, but in this case, they figured, you know, what the heck, why not tack an additional 10 bucks onto it? Because we can't. This one specifically, I actually did get at Costco recently, and I, I think I made a video of it, I'll put it up here, um, who still actually has it at $99.99, uh, really for either of the bottles, whether you get the Hakushu or the Yamazaki. Um, if you can find it at BevMo, they do end up having it usually around $129.99, but at $159.99, that's really starting to get into that mom and pop liquor store level of price gouging. Uh, either way, if we had bought this one at the Total Wine, um, we would have ended up paying $60 over the Costco price or a ridiculous 60% more uh, than what you would pay at Costco. So, you know, I'm definitely going to wait. And also, shame on you, Total Wine. Now, the ABV on this one is at 43%, which, you know, honestly is a bit lackluster uh, in terms of bourbon. And I guess even now for a lot of the scotch, for that matter. Um, but it is pretty common. I mean, I guess what well, Blanton's is at 46 and a half. Even the Hancock Reserve is at uh, 44.45. What is this Lagavulin at? Lagavulin's at uh, 43%. There you go. Um, but it is pretty common ABV for Japanese uh, whiskey. And really, uh, if it was much higher, if that ABV was higher, it probably would ruin kind of the well-balanced nature of the Yamazaki. Now, the tasting notes on this one, uh, especially having drank enough, there is definitely a sweetness that pairs extraordinarily well with something like sushi or raw fish. It's not overpowering, but has a well-balanced and exotic fruit-type flavors, and that light Mizunara oak flavor definitely comes through with a nice, a very beautiful creaminess that makes Yamazaki oh so delicious. But if you are a bourbon head, you know, Honestly, it's going to be a little bit more on the scotch side of the whiskey spectrum. Now, the review scores on it uh, are pretty good, as you would expect, at 89 points, uh, with most of the scores being in that high 80s uh, range. Um, and again, that is something that I totally agree with. I think that is a completely fair uh, assessment of it. So for me, this Yamazaki 12 uh, is a whiskey that I almost always have a gut response to buy, right? I see it, and I grab it, and I buy, um, even if I already have some at home. But at $159.99, uh, and this one, at this total wine, it was going to be a pass. Um, because if you can get it for around $110, plus or minus, I mean, that's pretty good. And at $99, uh, whether it's the Yamazaki 12 or the Hokushu, that is a buy all day, every day. Okay. All right, so that's it for today's Whiskey Wandered. I think it's probably one of the first ones that we've done at the Total Wine in Las Vegas, or Total Wine overall. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, if you like the Wanders, if you like the reviews, if you like the hauls, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and all the other great stuff we got cooking up for you, and we got tons of great stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps our channel to grow. It's uh, great for your Whiskey Mojo. And... You get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays, sometimes in between. So with that, just remember that if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it. 
Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. In this case, it might even be me. All right, everybody, I'm out. Have a great rest of your week, and adios.